I mean, you, you've had to have heard about、um, at least a few of the stories that have been surrounding the Canadian pop band Headley. Yeah. Mainly、uh, Jacob Hogarth, who's the front man of the band. You know, they've been around for a really long time. And it all started with one person on Twitter who decided to tell her story. And it's blown up since then.、Yeah. And of course, with all of the Me Too and Time's Up、uh, happenings in the movement, people started to come out of the w o r d w o r k s People are feeling braver to tell their stories. And、yeah. then earlier this week, this article、uh, from the CBC came out. And it was. It was graphic, it was, to say the it least. It was really tough to read.、Um, I'm, I even shared it on Facebook and I said, hey, like, if you've been through sexual assault, this is full of triggers. So、yeah. be careful reading it because those reporters, they did, they did their due diligence、mm-hmm. in corroborating the story. They say that, you know, it was a lot of thought and hard work was put into it. And when you read the article, it's, it's tough. The, I mean, the words, the content, everything in that, you don't, like, that's not something that you. Expand upon that is、right. that is what they have found from the facts, from text messages, from everything. Now,、uh, if you haven't read the article summarizing, there is a woman、uh, in Ottawa who is saying that Jacob Hogard raped her,、mm-hmm. which is a tough thing to even think. I mean, this is sort of the struggle that we've had when it's come to the Me Too and the Time's Up stuff. So many famous people, people we look up to, people we love and admire,、yeah. you don't want to believe that they could. Be awful people or do awful、sure. things. So, I wanted to talk about something that happened to me.、Um, so, a few months ago, we opened this conversation for the first time, and I told a story about when I first started working here at Amp Radio,、uh, a famous Canadian band came、mm-hmm. through. And I mean, some of you might remember, if not, to summarize quickly, there was an encounter、uh, with this person. This person who sings in this band、uh, made a really inappropriate comment to me and also touched me inappropriately. And that person was Jacob Hogard from Headley. So I wasn't ready in that moment to talk about it because, <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing that anybody feels. I wasn't going to be that person. Yeah. I wasn't going to be the whistleblower. I don't want to ruin someone's career. And look, I'm as guilty as anyone else in feeling in that moment. When it happened, I'll get into it in a minute, but in that moment, I really just chalked it up to obnoxious behavior. I was like, okay, what a jerk.、Yeah. Like, now, it's sorry, I'm like, ugh. It's also important to、uh, note that he, I'm sure, does not remember this. Like, we're talking about a guy who does a million interviews,、right. a million radio stations, but I remember it. Because we had just seen him a couple months previous. Right. So. Seven years ago, I was working here at Amp Radio, maybe three, four months. I was doing the evening show,、mm-hmm. and、uh, they were in doing an interview. and I was so starstruck. Like, I was so excited because I had been a Headley fan since I was in college. They,、yeah. The first time I ever saw them perform was at SATE. And、uh, I was lucky enough to be let into the studio. My coworker was like, hey, come on in. Like, come in and meet them. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And, yeah.、Uh, He was very, in that moment, I thought maybe he might have been on something because he was very manic and acting very sort of crazy. And、yeah. uh, but he was sweating a lot and his eyes were quite red. And, but of course, in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, he's a rock star. This、yeah. is so cool. Yeah.、Uh, and so they did the interview, whatever they came over.、Uh, I asked if I could be a part of the photo op. And,、uh, you know, I met Jacob and I said, hey, like, I have been a fan of you for a long time. I saw you at Satan. And, and、uh, he was like, oh, cool. Well, you know, maybe if you're lucky, I'll let you come out into the back alley with me. And I mean, I don't want to say it because it's graphic, but、right. it, he basically said I could give him oral sex if I was lucky. And、uh, we took a photo. And I, in that moment, I, I was like, what? what? Well, is, he, is, he, I, is he joking? Is he like, what? Like- it was such a fleeting moment, right?、Yeah. Where it's like, Oh, all of a sudden now we're doing this photo, and just as he, like, we're kind of all huddled, there's like maybe four or five of us, and just sort of gave my, my butt a quick little slap, and out the door he went. And when I told this story without naming names or talking about who it was,、mm-hmm. a girl actually reached out to me on Facebook that same morning, not even maybe 10 minutes after the conversation, and asked me if it was this 
person because she had had a similar experience. Yeah. And I know people who work in this industry in radio who've had similar experiences, yeah. who've told their stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I just thought that it was important for me to tell this story, not because I want to ruin anybody. I'm definitely not saying that he raped somebody or did any of the things he's being accused of. Right. But this is what he did to me. Yeah. And I know myself and I was lucky enough that I went home and didn't really think much about it after. It didn't affect me. It didn't yeah. change me. It didn't make me a different person. But it was the first thing I thought of the second time I met him and the third time and the fourth time. Right. And it was isolated. That was the only time he ever acted that way towards me. I don't know why he did it. Um, but it was important for me to tell the story because for anybody listening who's been through this in any type of situation, yeah. it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to talk about it and I, I, the I, next day or in my case, seven years later. I think it's it's brave that you want to say something because you, I mean, like, it's something you could brush off. You're Katie Summers. You brush a lot of things off every day. Right. And it's, it's something that you could easily move on from. But this is a situation where... You know, maybe someone is afraid to say something. Yes. And I think that's that's why you feel compelled to open up about it, because maybe there's someone who has a serious issue or something that is battling something inside. As somebody who I like to think I'm a strong person and mm -hmm. not a lot gets to me. But when it does, I try to be open about it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure that people will say, well, why didn't you say something? Yeah. Well, because I was, I really just, in my mind, I minimalized it so much Yeah. because that was just how I processed it. And it's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's just how I dealt with that situation. What I want you to know to anybody listening right now, like don't be, don't let your fear or what other people say or think of you be the, the driving force behind you your story. Yeah. You know your truth. If this has happened to you in any kind of capacity yeah. and you want to talk about it, talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, you're not ready, yeah. don't talk about it. But we want you to know specifically if you listen to the show that we are here for you all the time. We are here to talk about it. If you have questions, because I know that we have a lot of Headley fans that listen to yeah. this radio station. Well, and I mean, it, it's hard because like you know, we, we don't see a lot of celebrities come through here. No. And if you work in Canadian radio, there's a good chance that you're going to have a run-in with a band like Headley on the regular. Exactly. And I mean, we literally just had them in the studio here six months ago, seven mm -hmm. months ago. And I, I've just pretended like it never happened because right. it's my job. And I'm not saying that's the right way to deal with it, but that's how I dealt with it. And uh, I'm not, it's so, I'm stressing this so much. I am not saying that he's done the things he's been accused of. But if you're if you're questioning whether he could do those things, that was what he did to me. Yeah. And it happened and I it was important we talked about this yesterday cuz like I, I, I it took a lot of debating for me to want to tell this story openly because I'm I always want people to think highly of me and sure. I don't want people to think I'm lying because I'm not. I have no reason to lie yeah. and uh I wanted to tell my story so that you felt safe enough to tell yours if you want to and if you're ready for it because it's hard. Like, it's really hard. I think the thoughts that you had in that moment are a thoughts thoughts that are, you know, I, I'd say 99% of the women that experience these things are thinking like, I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to burn a uh, relationship with this label or I don't mm -hmm. want this to ruin my career in any way. In a moment of literal instancy, it happens so fast. Yeah something that he probably d didn't even think twice about mm -hmm. when he left here is something that could have affected me for a long time after. Yeah. It didn't in my case and that's okay. But if it does affect you or change you and you lose sleep over it, that's okay too. And you're allowed to talk about it. You're allowed to tell your story. Don't be scared. Yeah. So we've opened up the show as always. Our, our phone lines are always unbusied for you yeah. Uh, to call and you want to have a dialogue with us. If you're a Headley fan and you're not sure and you want to talk to me about my experience, DM me, call us. I'm here to talk, okay? And uh, it's tough, but it's important. Yeah, I think very, it's important. It's really so, important. Thank you for listening. Sorry to get all <laughs> I'm so nervous. It's fine. Oh my God, I'm like shaking. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening to the show too. We appreciate it. Amp Mornings with Kate.